Very, very special manager, someone who not only is going to take him to the top in terms of dollars, but also is going to stick with him through the thick and the thin as well as the thick of it. So he's looking for a very, very special, unique quality and, and whomever he is, he's going to announce. And I think the announcement is going to take place very soon. Well, I understand from the grapevine that Freddie Blassie said that he would not take a penny of the man's money until he had won the world's championship from Hulk Hogan. Well, that's Freddie Blassie for you. Whether or not he would put that in writing, I doubt it very, very seriously. Well, I do too. He's a classy individual, but he's also very tight with a dollar. Iron Sheik in control of Jose Luis Rivera. Look out! Sheik off! Holy boot! Look at the look on Rivera's face. In terms of reports around the wrestling world, I must comment also on you, Gorilla Monsoon. What an outstanding job you have done in the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, certainly very insightful in terms of your commentary, although there have been many, many complaints with the individual whom you associate yourself yeah, I with. I figured you'd have to throw something in just because well, I outshined you on your own show. Thank TNT. you very much, Vince. Coming from you, that certainly means a lot. You have to take with a grain of salt whatever the bot has to say at any given time. He's made derogatory remarks about you, about Mean Gene and myself and Huda, but I, I take it with a grain of salt. I know where he's coming from. Well, Mr. Ventura, no doubt, is the most biased individual to perhaps step behind a microphone, notwithstanding his verbose comments from time to time inside the ring, outside, a most unique individual, no doubt of that. Perhaps many individuals feel too unique. Well, I've nicknamed him at times unique. the fountain of That's misinformation. Impossible. Camel Clutch here being applied by the Iron Sheik. It won't take long. There goes the bell. Smartly, the referee calling for the bell before any further damage could be done to Jose Luis Rivera. I think Jose Luis is going to have to see his chiropractor after that adjustment. Let's go up and get the official word. The winner of the match, the Iron Sheik. Iron Sheik, Victor, look, he's not satisfied with the win. He wants to add some additional punishment here as he kicks him outside the ring. Vince, I want to take this opportunity to thank you very much for stopping by here and spending some time with us in the World Wrestling Federation. And uh, it's always a pleasure. Drop well, by anytime always, you can. Thank you very much. I uh, always appreciate that, Gorilla, and uh, notwithstanding the comments of Jesse Ventura. By the way, Vince McMahon, have you uh, talked to Prince lately? Oh, my God. Not going to respond to that, and I don't blame him. Wrestling fans, let's take a look here as the Sheik is going to do it, put the number on him. He applies the camel clutch here, and really, that's all she wrote. It was too much for Mr. Rivera. For all you fans who want to take part in the voting for the Manager of the Year contest, be sure and get your pencil paper and write to the address you see on your screen now. Vote for Hart, Lassie, Albano, Heenan, Valiant, the Hillbilly, Arnold Stolen, whoever you want I'm to cast your vote for. I'm voting for Stay Heenan. Stay tuned. We have a very special interview coming up in just a moment. All right, fans, stay tuned. More exciting World Wrestling Federation action coming up in just a moment or two. Get ready. Fans of the greater Providence area, the Warwick Music Theater, this Monday night with an 8 o'clock start, the World Wrestling Federation is going to be back in town. Tito Santana, new intercontinental champ with the title defense against Greg the Hammer Valentine. You fans know the story of that one. In addition, the killer bees of B. Brian Blair and jumping Jimmy Brunzel to meet Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Uncle Elmer on the car to meet veteran Rene Goulet. And come on in, Randy oh, yeah. Macho Man Savage. Coming up this Monday night, it's going to be veteran football great George Wells, your opponent. Oh, yeah, George Wells. Coming to Providence, Rhode Island, the smallest state in the United States. Yeah, with the biggest star coming down that aisle. Yeah, and I'm not talking about an ex-pro football player like George Wells. No, I'm not talking about the macho man Randy Savage, yeah. And when I come down that aisle, I want everybody, yeah, just to concentrate a little harder, yeah. Because it's completely different. Co concentrate on, uh, I don't uh, quite understand, Mr. Savage. Pinch yourself and make sure that you ain't dreaming. Because there ain't nobody else like me when I come down that aisle. And pro football player, yeah, I'm going to dump you and then anybody else. On the card that particular night, Providence, Rhode Island, Mean Gene Oakland, you could get into the ring against me. Put on your pink tights, come on in, and be oversaddled just like George Wells will be. 
Well, I I don't put myself in the class of certainly you, Mr. Savage. No, no, don't do that. For that, that matter, no. George Wells either. I am not a wrestler. No, put yourself in the class of somebody else, yeah, because I make everybody look bad. Hulk Hogan is not in my class. No one is in my class. He is uh, from a very good class. Randy Savage, number one free agent today in the World Wrestling Federation. This Monday night in Warwick. We're right back. Ladies and gentlemen, this match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Comac, New York, weighing 240 pounds, Gino Carabello. His opponent now about to enter the ring area. First, I'd like to introduce the manager, Hillbilly Jim. Now introducing from Philadelphia, Mississippi, weighing four. Something else that could be a weapon too if you don't use the right guard. Well, got a lot of pigs down on the farm, Jess. And it happens. You, you reckon that Uncle Elmer can do some hog calling? Oh, I'm sure he resembles that remark. Carabello going after him, but in the wrong manner. Definitely Carabello's gonna have to change his tactics a little bit here. Drop kick while well, he only hit him in the belly button. <laughs> Little Billy Jim getting a big thrill out of it. Understand, uh, Hillbilly telling me earlier on in the locker room area that it won't be too long before he's ready to re-enter the squared circle and settle some scores. Does he really want to do that? You think he may have learned his lesson? Uh-oh, Carbello getting a spanking. Boy, he can't wait as he's chomping at the bit to get back in there. Well, that can be, that can work against you too, Gorilla, because if that leg isn't totally healed and you try to do something before you really should, you could injure it even worse. Well, I'm sure he's well aware and of that. a lot of athletes will make that mistake. Well, Hillbilly Jim is not just a guy from the backwoods. This is an intelligent individual, and I'm sure you classify these two intelligent I didn't two. say these two. I said Hillbilly Jim. Look at that leg drop by Uncle Elmer. Rolls over on top, smothering the man, and it's all over. Just like that. Uncle Elmer giving him a little air there. He is a huge, huge individual. Let's get the official word. The winner of the match, Uncle Elmer! Uncle Elmer, oh, giving us that shot, Jesse was closing there, trying to steal some of your thunder. Now what is it, did they call that dancing what those two do? Well, that was sort of a twist and uh, a little bit of the junkyard dogs jugging and what have you. What are we having, a hoedown? Is it's possible. He's, he's got a lot of rhythm, if nothing else, look at that. They're really taking this guy to their heart. Look at Jim, he's getting with it. Hillbilly, Jim and Uncle Elmer. What a duo. Let's go back and take a look at this bohemian as he puts the lights out for Mr. Carbello. There's the 
beginning to the end right there. Uh, watch this. This is, this is what's called a 500 pound leg drop in my book. Look at that. Oh, what force coming down. Scooting over on top. Uncle Elmer. And Hillbilly Jim with a big smile on his face. Getting to do once again victorious this week. Uncle Elmer, stay with us for a most interesting interview. All right, fans, we're going to get you back up into the ring in just a moment or two for more exciting World Wrestling Federation action. Captain Lewis, Al Battle, my, my very good, dear, close, personal, longtime friend. Captain, manager for the current tag team champions of the world. Your 15th winning combo. You're enjoying 15th. glory days. Glory days, me, glory. Gene. And when glory we, days. Glory, glory, glory. And when we said, when we took them, we said we were going to defend against all comers. Now we ready for the English Let's Bulldog. Read. Come on in, Mike and Barry. We know we're ready for the English Bulldogs. We're ready for Valentine <laughs> and this <laughs> Brutus Beefcake <laughs> with Johnny Valiant behind him, baby. And when you know Johnny Valiant's involved, you've got to be concerned. We're ready for all comers. The Iron Sheet could be. We don't care who it is. You can put anybody. You can put Savage in there with with uh, with the uh, a Titmouse's hind legs. You can put Joe Faboscus. You can put Charlie Brown. You can put any man. You can put a Titmouse's hind legs with a Faboscus brush on a Saturday night. Captain's ready, baby. I'm ready, Teddy. We be ready, yeah. you be ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I mean, I'm, when I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm hell when I'm well, baby, I ain't never sick, baby. I'm I'll tell ready. you what, I can see uh, Mike Rotundo where you get uh, all of your enthusiasm. You know, Captain has a lot of enthusiasm, and it's rubbing off okay. on us in a lot of ways. For instance, getting these titles back. When it happened, we lost them, we said we're going to go after it and get them back. And now there's all kind of teams coming at us. Like Captain mentioned, the Bulldogs. Bulldogs. The Killer Bees. Hey. Killer Bees. We got and Nye Heart and Heart. Sting. Ooh. Uh, who the Iron Sheik and Nikolai Bullcock. Now, watch out for There's Valentine's Day. Many teams Day. after these titles, but now we have to get on it and, re and hold on to them with everything we've got. That's exactly what we're going to do. All right, the Barry Windham, share your thoughts. Uh, you've got to be very happy, at least for the time being, as a tag team. That's right. You know, it's been a long road back for Mike and I, and we're just going to prove to everybody that we're capable champions. That's what we're doing right now. We're showing everybody that all comers for these belts. They are. Two of the best right now. It's tag team Valentine's champions Barry Windham, Mike Rotundo, managed by Captain Lou Albano. Calm down. Area this Monday night, August 12th, at the Warwick Musical Theater. Good seats are still on sale at the box office at the theater. You'll see on the card, Pedro Morales, Macho Man Randy Savage, Uncle Elmer, and the Killer Bees will meet Bret Hart and Jim the Anvil Nightheart, while Tito Santana defends the Intercontinental title against Greg the Hammer Valentine, all happening this Monday night at 8 p.m. at the Warwick Musical Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, this match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Montreal, Quebec, weighing 217 pounds, Serge Jodouin. His opponent, now approaching the ring, from Sarasota, Florida, weighing 235 pounds, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. There he is, still without a manager. The hottest piece of property in professional wrestling. The hottest free agent around, Jess. Definitely Randy Macho Man Savage. He's colorful, he's flamboyant, he's devastating in the ring. He uses aerial tactics, he's vicious, he's sadistic. He's got everything that warms my heart, Gorilla. Have you uh, sent in any closed bids on this individual yourself, Jess? I'm not saying anything right oh, now. okay. I'm not saying anything. You know, I got a pretty fair bank account myself. I'm I may, sure you do. You I, never spend any of it. I may have the closed bid on this. Wouldn't that surprise you if I ended up as manager? It wouldn't surprise me a bit, Jess, because I know what your capabilities are, and I know that cream always rises to the top. Sarge Jodoin certainly will get an education from the Macho Man. There he goes. Look at this macho up on the top turnbuckle like a bird of prey. Double hammer right into the back of the neck. You know what I like about the macho man? He wastes no time. It's like he's in here, he's giving the people the look at him. He devastates his opponent and finishes him off. You know, you get the macho man in there, Jess, with a guy of equal ability and equal experience. That leap from that top turnbuckle to the concrete 
could be a termination of his career. Definitely. It's a, it's a 50 dangerous 50 proposition out there. Extremely dangerous maneuver. Vertical suplex coming up. But see, that's what I... Whoa, look at that. That's what I like about the Macho Man. He's willing to take that chance, Gorilla. Well, he's a gambler. You have to be a gambler to come into the Royal Wrestling Federation and shoot for all the marbles. And that's why this guy is here. And for no other reason, this is the mecca of all professional wrestling. This is where the top talent in the world is at any given time. This is where the titles with the most prestigious backgrounds have come from in the past and will always remain here. Oh, without, without a doubt, Gorilla. Uh-oh, there goes the of wrestling. Joe Doyne once again on the cold concrete floor here in the arena and once again, airborne. Oh. oh. Macho Man delivering another... Tr oh, he's looking for Hulk Hogan. I heard that. Well, I'll tell you, that leap from the top, uh, that'll be... That, what a matchup that would be on the Macho Man and the champ. Wow. Macho Man, Randy Savage, every manager in the entire wrestling world taking a look at this individual and certainly wanting him in their state. I know... Oh, power good slam. Looking power slam, and I know what's coming up now. The most devastating... Elbow I've ever witnessed in my life. The Macho Man going to the top. Watch as he goes straight up in the air. Holy Macho. Good night. Didn't have to really cover him, just went through the motions. Macho Man is once again perched up on that top turnbuckle. Look at the agility the Macho Man has. I bet he can walk up and down them ropes. Joe Doyle, gorilla. still laying there. Let's get the, the word. winner of the match, the Macho Man, Randy Savage. Macho Man, Randy Savage, with a Duke here this week on the World Wrestling Federation. Once again, let me reiterate, the hottest piece of property in professional wrestling today. Every manager seeking a contract with this individual. Let's go back, take a look. Here he is, up to the top turnbuckle. Now watch his, how he goes straight up into the air. He doesn't only leap out, he goes straight up some 14 to 15 feet high. Watch this. Macho man flying. Wow, what an elbow right into the sternum of this youngster. And that's all she wrote. Victory for the Macho Man. Let's go right now to my colleague, Jesse the Body Ventura, as he takes over in his body shop. You know, it's not often that somebody can shine as good as me, look as good as me, and have the charisma of me in the ring. But as my guest this week at the body shop, I got a manager extraordinaire, luscious Johnny Valiant, and I got his main man, Mr. Beautiful himself, Brutus Beefcake. But, wait a minute, there's a cloud on the horizon. And that cloud on the horizon, luscious John, yeah. and I'm gonna lay it to you straight. It to me straight. The man's about six foot ten, and the man's close to 500 pounds, and worse than that, he don't use right guard, he don't use Aaron. He smells a little bit. And Hillbilly Jim brought him in, Uncle Elmer. And I believe it's serious, Luscious. Well, I'm sure it's very, very serious, but you know, Luscious Johnny Valle and Brutus Beefcake, we're not worried about Uncle Elmer, we're not worried about Aunt Rosie, we're not worried about Hillbilly Jim, because Hillbilly Jim is a bona fide, legitimate triple, and if Hillbilly Jim's Uncle Elmer wants to enter the ring with my main squeeze right here, Brutus Beefcake, or in fact, let's just Johnny Valiant, or a tag team with me and him against those two professional blind days of wrestling, we in fact will accommodate their very wishes. How about that, baby? Well, I'll tell you what, I got one warning for you, Luscious. You two may have to bring nose plugs into the ring if it happens. What do you think, Brutus? <laughs> you know, I've never wrestled a pig farmer before, Jesse. I mean, I never kicked a big fat pig, but I sure I like to hear it when he hits the ground. A big fat bump! <laughs> It'll make a big noise, Johnny. 
whenever he hits the hey, floor. Hey, give me that yellow. Oh, he'll be the gym down there. He, he done going right. That's about all we got. Six weeks in the body shop. We'll see you next time, Daddy. The pleasure was yours. All yours was the pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, this match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 242 pounds, SD Special Delivery Jones. His opponent, from the Double Cross Ranch in Amarillo, Texas, weighing 260 pounds, Terry Funk. Should be a most interesting confrontation, Jess. Oh, most definitely. Look, Funk's going after him right now, Gorilla. Still had his poncho on and attacked the man from the city of brotherly love. Can you believe one guy from the city of brotherly love, the other one from the Double Cross Ranch? How befitting. Or how disgusting, one of the two. Oh, look at that. Scooped him right out over the top rope. Sends SD down to the concrete and is now going out after him. There he comes Terry around the corner as a bounty hunter. Wow, drop kick right on the concrete floor. <laughs> Devastating maneuver. This man will pull out all the stops to get a victory. And look how smart he is. He knows where that count is. He knows when to get back in that ring to beat that count out. Well, I don't think I know of anybody in the entire wrestling world today who's as ring-wise as Terry Funk. How can you not pick that up being around that wrestling family? Look out! Lucky for SD, his left leg caught that top rope and helped to smother that blow. But it was, it was still devastating anyway. He hit real hard, Gorilla. Oh, Funk telegraphed that move. SD was waiting. SD for an atomic drop. Oh, he got it. Special Delivery Jones coming to life. He's a southpaw. There's that headbutt. Rocking and socking Terry Funk. Goes out and rams himself into the steel railing. SD slamming him on the concrete. And listen to the crowd, Gorilla, they're going crazy. On their feet, capacity crowd on hand. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, I guess, Jess. Well, I'll tell you what, SD Special Delivery Jones is no slouch in anybody's book. He can beat anyone on any given day. Bounty Hunter Terry Funk is finding that out right now. Well, you set him off for that time. Special Delivery Jones, one of the reckoning forces here in the World Wrestling Federation. And he's given Terry Funk all he wants. Uh-oh. He's that's the wrong maneuver for Funk. <laughs> Terry just about knocked himself out. SD Jones winding up with that big left hand right to the kisser. This but has I've turned into it. a Pier 6 brawl, Gorilla. It certainly has. Not too much wrestling going on right now. Nice leapfrog by Jones. Oh! Leapfrog right over. Got caught in the sleeper. Now, he got Jones awful early in that. He should have wore him down more, in my opinion, Gorilla. Well, if he can incorporate a little bit of a choke here with the sleeper, he might be able to get the big guy. S.D. Jones down to his knees. S.D.'s fighting it. He's fighting it. He's very close to the ropes here. If he only knew where he was, he could reach around and grasp the rope. S.D. Jones fighting it. Trying to come up. Oh, a handful of tight scoots him right back down again. That's being the seasoned veteran right Referee there. calling for the bell. Obviously seeing that S.D. Jones had just about had it. Terry Funk, obviously the winner here. He's going after the Brandon Iron. Going to brand special delivery, Jones. Look at that. Terry Funk, Down victorious this week on the World Wrestling Federation. Stay with us, wrestling fans. A very special announcement coming up from one of the stars of the World Wrestling Federation. I'm Bobby DeBrain Heenan. Whether you like me or not, I don't care. But if you drink and you drive, you're dumb and you're stupid. Show me you got some brains. Prove me wrong. Be a brain yourself.
don't drink, don't drive, just walk. Ladies and gentlemen, this match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Las Vegas, Nevada, weighing 240 pounds, Barry O. His opponent, now approaching the ring, from Tecula, Mexico, weighing 235 pounds, the Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, Tito Santana. A standing ovation for the new champion, Tito Santana. Notice he did not have a belt, Jess, because that belt was destroyed by Craig the Hammer Valentine as he smashed it against that steel cage in the Baltimore Civic Center. Well, the Hammer let everyone know that he wasn't too happy with the decision in that cage match. And I, I personally feel title matches should never take place inside a cage. Well, I believe that that's the way they figured, the World Wrestling Federation Championship Committee figured that's the only way that that particular matchup could be settled once and for all. And it was very final, wasn't it? And controversial. Well, very simple. Once inside that steel cage, first man to reach the arena floor, declared the winner. Santana was obviously that person. This should be a good match up here, Gorilla. Barry O showed me a lot in the past few weeks. And the Intercontinental Champion Santana could very well have his hands full for a tough night here. Well, this is a non-title event, and Barry O, although very young in years, very old in experience, and he's got a lot of quickness and a lot of ring savvy, makes him a tough competitor. Nice sit-out and turn-in by Santana, that amateur wrestling background coming into play. Barrio complaining uh, vehemently to the referee about something. I don't know what it was. I didn't see anything wrong. Yeah, definitely he's unhappy about something out there. Santana's family just thrilled about him regaining the Intercontinental title. Barrio bails out to the floor to take a breather. The cool of Mexico, big parade down the main street just with everything. They didn't hold back anything. Tecula, Mexico. That's that's right outside Tijuana. No, it's not right outside Tijuana, Jess. My God, it seems to me in some of my travels no, down it's south of my hometown of San Diego, I seem to remember that. No, place. it's not anywhere near the coast of California. It borders on the. Coast I remember of Texas. Rosie's Bar down oh, there. Give me a break, Jess. That's some fun there, Gorilla. Santana in, ducks underneath a big right hand. Whoa! What a nice drop kick. And an arm drag takes Barry over. Wouldn't be surprised if very shortly we will see a return match between Santana and the Hammer because there's going to be a return clause in the contract. Well, I think there definitely should be. Well, in Greg, every championship match, there usually is. Greg the Hammer ducked no one. Of course, he might not want any more part of Tito Santana. I highly doubt that. I was talking to Jimmy Hart the other day, and they're frothing at the bit, Gorilla, and I'll go on record right now with that one. Jimmy Hart, the fountain of misinformation, Jess. You believe anything that that individual says? Jimmy Hart never has lied to me, and I've known the man going on three or four years now. Well... Certainly has he might lie to you because maybe you deserve to be lied well, to. Well, maybe I do at times, but he certainly is not a man of virtue in my book. Santana slips behind and a nice atomic drop. Very oh. over the top rope, hard down to the concrete. Santana had so much force behind that atomic drop, it, it literally threw Barrio right over that top rope. That might be all for this youngster. He's hurting. Right on that tailbone he came down. I felt a few of them in my day, Gorilla. Well, we both know what they feel like. Don't feel good. Dario looking for timeout. There is no timeout in professional wrestling, folks. That's why you always have to stay in top condition because of that fact. There are no timeouts. I think probably the worst feeling you could ever have inside that square circle, I'm sure you'll agree with me, Jess, is to run out of gas out there. Definitely. Oh, you're at the complete mercy of your opponent. The cardinal sin is not to be in shape. Santana winding it up here. Oh, look at that handful of hair gets Barry out of there. Santana didn't like that. Of course, you and I don't have to worry too much anymore about any of that. That's Chicano temper, and look at that 
Look at that slick move by Barrio. Come in behind the referee and caught him with a short left. He's quick. He's got quickness on his side. And he knows how to deliver the blows. You can't touch a referee, Barrio. You'll be in deep, deep trouble. Barrio with some real aggressive moves has Chico in a bit of a jam here. Power slam possibly coming up. Oh, and a beauty. Down for the cover. He's got the leg hook, though. Whoa, he got a two and a half there, Gorilla. Barrio walking the second rope from the inside. He's up there a long time. Santana wasn't there. Santana with a right hand. He's furious right now. Barrio whips in. No, reversal. Santana in. Oh, the flying forearm. And three got him. That was a devastating forearm, Gorilla. Certainly was patented move. You could see Barrio's head just... The sweat just fly off of that when he was delivered. Let's get to work. The winner of the match, the Intercontinental Heavyweight Wrestling Champion, Kiko Santana. Let's go back and take a look at that beautiful forearm. Flying one at that by Tito Santana. As he goes to whip Barrio in, he gets reversed here. But has the presence of mind to come off that rope and look at this elbow. Whammo! What a job he did is down for the count, for the cover, and he gets him. Wrestling fans, don't miss out. Be a part of the Manager of the Year contest. Send your votes into the address you see on your screen right now. Vote for Hart, Lassie, Albano, Heenan, Valiant, Hillbilly, Jim, whoever you want to vote. I'm voting Pass for Jimmy Hart. If you want to vote for the body, send a vote in for him. <laughs> Stay with us. We have a most interesting interview coming up in just a moment. All right, fans, Warwick Music Theater this Monday night, 8 p.m. start the World Wrestling Federation. Back in the greater Providence area still as we speak. Plenty of great tickets available for that fantastic card. Santana as the Intercontinental Champ to meet Greg the Hammer Valentine. There is tag team action. You talk about excitement, electricity, with Bret Hart, Jim the Anvil Neidhart going against the Killer Bees of B. Brian Blair and you, Jeff and Jimmy Brunzel. That's right, Gino, and every match is important, especially this match, because Brian and I are trying to s establish ourselves in the WWF, and so is the Hitman and the Anvil. It's very important. We have to be on the lookout for their manager, the Mouth of the South, too, all the time. Jimmy Hart can be a sometimes very unscrupulous individual, as you very well know. That's right, Mean Gene. You know, I hope he sticks his face in that ring one time with that little megaphone of his because I'd love to knock it off. They call it, I believe, a bullhorn. Is that God what it's called? Love. I don't yeah. know what it's called. I'd like to take a minute out right now, Mean Gene, to thank all the people of Providence because the last time we were there, we were very successful, Jimmy and I, and, you know, all the people stood behind us. And, you know, you can win matches two ways. You can take shortcuts or you can get that adrenaline flowing, and I prefer the adrenaline which the people get flowing in our bodies. And Good, hard work. That's right, that's right. And, you know, we, uh, we're real proud of, of what we do, and every time we step in the ring, we give it 100%. And, so very crucial, these matches coming up for the two of you. I thank you, Killer Bees, B. Bryant Blair, and Jumpin' Jimmy Brunzel out in Warwick this coming Monday night. Another gentleman that's going to be in Warwick this Monday night. How do? How's your mom? How are you? Oh, my word. Uncle Elmer. How are you, buddy? I'm just terrific, just as fine as I guess a guy could be. Well, hello out there to roll out all them people that took Warwick Musical Theater. Is that where it's at? That's exactly Well, right. listen, we're kind of musical, too, and we're going to be singing a different kind of song when we come there. Goulette we're going to be talking blues. about Red Goulette, Goulette, Goulette. Blues. That's right, the Goulette Blues. That's right. You know, Elmer, he's got that claw for you, that thing we put on your head oh, like that. Uh, I've done told you what to do about that. You know, I got this big leg too, don't that's you? Right. you know, people don't see what that big leg does, and don't see what that big old fist does, too. I ain't worried about him, but I'll tell you what, the claw thing is pretty bad, but I, I don't worry about it. Well, they, they eat snails from where he comes from anyway, so it don't make no difference. They that's what? Escargot. They eat, they eat snails. No, they're snails. I've done looked it up. They eat snails. Snails? Yeah. That's them things people fish with. Yeah, you know, we used to put salt on them to get them off the front. I don't know, gentlemen, if we're talking snails or if we're talking that's wrestling that's here. Goulette. That's all I got to say, because we're going to be there. Well, I think it's it... snails and puppy dog tails. His mom and daddy should have known better than to name him something like Renette. What's wrong with them people? Well, it's actually, it's Renee. What's wrong with George or Bob or Gene? Renee, you know what Renee sound like? That sound like a girl's name. That's right. Well, it can, it can go either way. 
Well, I don't know. I probably shouldn't have said that. I don't know which way it's going to be. Gentlemen, the Warwick Music Theater this Monday night, the World Wrestling Federation. So long, y'all. and everything broke loose here this week, Jess. The Iron Sheik, victorious, as well as Uncle Elmer making a, another tremendous victory here on the World Wrestling Federation. And the Macho Man, Jess. The Macho Man, Randy Savage. I like him. I like him real, real well, Gorilla. The man from the Double Cross Ranch, Terry Funk, doing a number on Special Delivery Jones, hometown Philadelphia, certainly wasn't a good week for him on the World Wrestling. Definitely Tour. not, and last but definitely not least, Intercontinental Champion Chico Santana, looking as good as I've seen him. Tito Santana, and next week, the big one, the big headliner here on the World Wrestling Federation, the Hulkster himself, Hulk Hogan, right here on the World Wrestling Federation. World Wrestling Federation, heavyweight champion,